Hello, everyone. Welcome back. <laughs> no, that's throwing me off. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, this week we'll go over fixing audio issues you might have with your sound and how you can go about repairing it in post-production. So, what kind of problems are we talking about? Well, getting wind noise, uh, airplanes or cars, audio signals being too low or too weak, uh, using a poor low-quality microphone. That's a nice microphone. ones that's not plugged in. So before you apply any filters, mixes, or anything complicated, nope. you need to edit your sound. Edit it. The first step is to organize your track. The first step is to organizing your tracks. If a problem happens in one track, likely it's happening more than once throughout it. Take a look at our mixing video for more tips on how to organize all your audio. Organize. Organize. <laughs> the simplest method to cover issues is to go through scene by scene and find any issues like bumps, pops, cracks, anything that needs to be removed. Go ahead and cut them out and replace them with some room tone or empty air. Be creative. Professional tips. At the end of most of your lines and edits, you'll want to crossfade the clips by a couple frames. This will help you down the line when you need to blend and mix your audio. If some of these issues fall directly into the dialogue though, don't panic. I can tell you're panicking. Stop, stop freaking out. See if you have more than one take on any given shot or scene. And you know, it's always good to have multiple versions of a certain recording while you're on set. So keep that in mind. But what if I need to replace a line and the speed of the new clip doesn't match the previous? Ah, uh, well, you can edit that clip a little bit or you can use automatic speech alignment if you're using Adobe Audition. Uh, this is normally used for doing ADR, but uh, this tool allows you to manipulate each take of dialogue to fit better with what's happening on screen. Check it out. So chances are that you are working with GoPros, DSLRs, or even cell phones. They don't have the best mics. Well, phones have decent mics, but they don't have the best mics generally on them, and you want to get the best sound possible on your budget. Mm -hmm. So you'll want to focus on the dialogue and making that dialogue as clear as possible. To do that, you'll use an EQ. It didn't stay long. I didn't check my watch. Well, an EQ is an equalizer. It's a tool that allows you to manipulate the frequencies in your audio. The most common one that you and most people are most likely familiar with is the graphical EQ. It's got really good graphics. Uh, no, it's basically a curve that goes across all the frequencies. You can raise and lower different points to help emphasize what you need in your sound. So working with bad microphones, you need to make sure that the human voice is as clear as possible and generally the human voice is strongest in the 100 to 200 hertz range. Oh, oh. So give that section a little bit of a bump if you need to. So that means you'll be manipulating that area, that range, to sound the most clear, using the highs to help the articulation, the mids to help strengthen and give it body, and then you can also remove the lows and highs surrounding the dialogue or voice to help get rid of any unnecessary hums, hisses, or background sounds. Yeah, you did it. The one issue that will always affect you, no matter what microphone you use, is wind. It's the low bassy rumble that is caused by the air affecting the internals of your microphone. So, how, how do, do you, you remove, remove it? it? <laughs> There's a few ways. Nico, what's one way? Alright, so one simple way is to use the EQ again. Mm -hmm. So look for those low tones and dampen them as much as possible. It's very difficult to remove it from every single shot. Yeah but you'll likely find a threshold where it feels comfortable and it's kind of working. Another tool you can use to help remove wind noise is a waveform editor. The waveform editor works very much like an EQ, except that it gives you a visual representation of every single frequency, kind of like a film strip. So rather than raising and lowering specific frequencies like an EQ, you can actually select entire sections of that frequency and delete specific parts of it. So it's a little more effective when you need just one single hum removed from a shot that's not affecting your highs and mids, just your lows. You can also reduce noise by making a noise print. And this is one of the features you can also use in Audition. Basically, it takes a segment of sound, looks at exactly what's happening in it, and then goes through and removes exactly what you just fed it. It's kind of like film grain reduction with a, a camera, except it's for your ears. <laughs> Anyways, the further you push this noise reduction, the more it will degrade your audio. So just use some nuance. Yeah. So, right. part four. Part four, peaking audio. Peaking audio. All right, so there's a lot of issues you can fix with these solutions, but sadly, there are still some that are pretty dang hard to fix. Uh, sometimes impossible, actually, but one of them is peaking audio. That's when you're speaking too loudly into your microphone. So the funny part is you don't actually have to yell to Redline. It just means your mic levels are turned too high. So there's some filters that can kind of help, but not really. 
It will always sound funky and affect the audience's experience. The best solutions are what we talked about. Find another take or even try re-recording it. Sorry about that one. So now you know some basics in fixing the occasional problem in your sound, you can relax and trust it will turn out fine. Wait, but you don't want to just say, we can fix it in post. Uh, best, the best problem is the one you never have to deal with. So, <laughs> so try to get like wind socks or dead cats for your microphone, not real dead cats. For cars and airplanes, look into what microphones are best for the scenes and locations you're shooting. Mm -hmm. It goes a long way, just like getting like the right ND filters for your camera to help stop down in the sunlight, or getting the right lens for the shot. If you're using a camera or recorder and mixer that can mount multiple microphones, try taking advantage of that. Just like shooting with two cameras for a single scene, uh, you can actually use multiple microphones in case one picks up a bad sound or one messes up. It's always good to have a backup. In fact, sometimes people even use the same microphone just going into two lines, and you can have one turned up and one turned down, so you get the whole range. On a lot of big movie sets, they'll usually have a wireless mic on every one of the lead actors, just like we're wearing. Then depending on how much they move around or where they move in a scene, they'll actually have one or two more guys holding boom poles and shotgun microphones across different points on the set, and even hide wireless mics everywhere in tough to reach places. Basically, this prevents people from missing any sound they need to get, and there's always a clean take. Gonna fill you guys in on some interesting technical stuff. There's a few terms that you guys might be familiar with, such as 48 kilohertz sound or 44.1 kilohertz sound. You also might have heard 16-bit audio or recording in 24-bit audio. We're going to quickly tell you guys what those mean and how they affect your audio. When you hear the terms 48 kilohertz, 48 kilohertz is a sample rate. Effectively, you're getting 48,000 samples per second or so. It's like the frame rate of your audio recording in a way. Exactly, it's the difference of recording in 24 frames per second versus 60. They play over the same length of time, but that 60 frames per second is buttery smooth and has tons of frames in between. Now, bit depth, on the other hand, in a 16-bit sample, you have 16 bits to represent detail or the resolution of that sound. In 24 bits, that's a much bigger number to represent so many more values within that sound, from basically nothing to everything. Dealing with ADR and re-recording lines is a pain in the booty, and so is dealing with wind noise and posts. So just be very diligent to prevent those problems from happening on set, and then later on when you're editing, it's gonna be a breeze. We hope you guys learned a little bit here and can maybe apply this to your own piece. And if you have any questions, hit us up on Twitter, at Corridor Digital, or send us an email, or um, just, uh, I don't know, mail us something. Send a raven. Send a raven. To Cordor pigeon, Digital. A pigeon. Send your pigeons to Cordor Digital, and uh, we will uh, take those birds and send them back. With like tips written on the little paper. Tips, little, the little tip for the <laughs> bird, and the two birds like.